Joining us now, former Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich, by the way, and this on the heels of today's big news, where we have been following all day. We have more terror, this time in Munich. Munich police say, that, yes, this is a terror attack. All day and night, they have been warning their citizens to stay home and get off the streets. All subways remain shut down, and we know that it started. They know that at least three people they suspect involved in all of this. They don't know for sure. Eyewitnesses described the scene at the mall saying bodies were lying all over the floor. So which worldview is correct, truthful, accurate, and which one is naive, ignorant, and frankly, bordering on pathologically wrong? Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House. I, you know, you gave the speech two nights ago. And, you know, well, just add this you to your know, list. Uh, well, let me just say two things. First, what makes this very poignant for close to me is that on June 15th, we were in Munich, and I was doing a Facebook Live showing the Glockenspiel, which is the famous uh, musical uh, thing at the City Hall. And, and you know, it's a beautiful city. It's a lovely place. Um, and here we have this horrifying event going on right now. So for us personally, only a few weeks ago, we were right there. Uh, and we really, really empathize with the people who are there and what's happening to them. The second, you know, I went in this morning, I was talking to various elite news media people who said, oh, Donald, Donald Trump's view was, was too dark. Uh, and, and this is apparently the, the, the mainstream media's uh, version of reality today was that the speech last night was too dark. Well, my, my challenge to the elite media is really simple. You want to look at Munich and tell us about dark? I mean, what you have here is a very simple test. Uh, what we have is Donald Trump is a realist describing realistically what is going on in which there are terrible events being carried out by, by terrorists. You know, you, you can understand the president's situation. He's surrounded by the Secret Service. He's, he has Air Force One. He has Marine One. He has huge ca you know, caravans of cars. Of course he feels safe. Uh, Hillary Clinton, I think, has had Secret Service protection for 24 years. Of course she feels safe. How about the rest of us? And, and some of these elite reporters who were just all over this, in the New York Times coverage, all these different things this morning, they had found their theme, you know, Donald Trump was too pessimistic, too dark. Well, uh, uh, tell me about it after you watch Munich. It seems to me Munich is absolutely validation that Donald Trump is in touch with reality, and his media critics, as well as his opponent, are living a fantasy land. Well, their spin on it, I mean, they the convention, from my perspective, having been to many of them, really couldn't have gone any better. But, of course, there has to be a, a negative narrative that begins somewhere. And it's a sad irony that Donald Trump lays out the case that the people that won't say the words radical Islamic terrorism, the ones that did identify ISIS as the JV team, and all the damage and destruction that has then followed— you know, the ones that would use these ridiculous euphemisms, workplace violence, man-caused disasters, overseas contingencies have been so wrong. Right, and I think when we watch the Democrats next week, we'll see them be wrong again and again and again. And here's what people have to ask themselves. I mean, I'm, I'm frankly as angry at the elite media as I am at Hillary Clinton. I mean, Hillary Clinton at least has the legitimacy of being a hardline left-winger who is being surrounded by left-wing allies, and she represents them. But to have people who pretend that they're reporters spend this morning I, I had one interview i did it was just ridiculous and and they had this whole theme as you say the the, the the narrative i guess that's the term nowadays and their narrative is nuts and of course tragically and let me be very clear with this it is tragic that this is happening in munich today but it is also a pretty powerful signal that donald trump is right about how dangerous the world is and the news media and the democrats are just plain living in a fantasy land you know, if you look at the liberal media, let me point out some things here to you that were said on CNBC. Trump's use of illegal alien murders. In other words, real examples. He had real, real mothers that I interviewed this week that went up on that stage at the RNC convention and told the story of how they lost their children. They'll never see them again. And CNBC refers to that as the use of illegal alien murders reminiscent of the Willie Horton ad. You have Rachel Maddow comparing Trump's speech. It could be a gateway drug for the KKK becoming mainstream to America. Bill Maher saying Republicans are, quote, retarded Nazis. Election is a referendum on decency. Van Jones terrified by Trump's, you know, psychopathic speech about Mad Max America. And I can keep going on for hours here. 
But by the way, can, can I just take one, since I was involved in it, can I take one brief moment to, to go back on history lane? Sure. Willie Horton was a vicious murderer who was released by Michael Dukakis in a weekend program for patrolling, paroling murderers who kidnapped a couple in Maryland, raped her, and then stabbed both of them some 50 times and left them in an oil uh, uh, bin. Uh, Willie Horton was not a fantasy. He was a reality. For that couple, he was a nightmare. He ended their lives. He deprived their families of their, of their lives, and he deprived them of their future. And uh, the left has been desperate ever since to say, oh, it's really unfair and inappropriate to talk about it. Well, you tell that to the victims. The same thing right here. You tell the victims and their families who've been killed by people who came in, and they say, well, it's statistically not meaningful. Well, it's 100% meaningful to the person who gets killed and to the family who loses their loved ones. And there's something almost sick about the elite media using these phony statistics to say things that aren't true. You know, there aren't many uh, of the uh, refugees who are in Munich who are killing people this afternoon. There was only one refugee who was cutting people up on the train earlier this week. I mean, after all, statistically, that's not a big risk. There is zero reason for the United States to put its citizens at risk by accepting people we don't know who come from regions that are violent and who may well decide that they hate us. You know, I just think that, you know, almost now every day, and you've been on the program a lot recently, and thank you. You were actually off today, and, and I called you. I said, I want you to respond because this really fit the narrative of the speech. I think this is the most preparation you ever put into a speech, knowing you all of these years. But it fit the narrative. Here we go again, but it seems like every other day it's either cops being targeted for assassination, you have people lying in wait, they're being ambushed, or it's a terror attack either here in America or elsewhere around the world, and it's done by the JV team that Hillary and I, I, you can argue from my perspective, Hillary and Obama created by pulling out of Iraq early, not standing strong on Syria, and having a, a, a sort of a, a, an unwillingness, which is mysterious to me, to identify the enemy of our time, which is evil, radical Islamists. Well, let me say, first of all, I want to thank you uh, for agreeing to put a link to my speech uh, on your website, because I do think, I mean, this is a speech I put a long time into. This is a topic I've been working on since the 1970s. I think that it, it is now so vividly, powerfully clear, uh, and I, I hope that all of our listeners will take a little bit of time to look at this. I also want to suggest to them uh, that Daniel Silva's new novel, Black Widow, which starts with France and shows you the problems in France and then takes you through ISIS. It is the most vivid explanation of what we are living through. And I think people, when they read it, are going to realize, you know, this is a real war. And we had better have a wartime president who wants to defeat the enemy, not some deluded person living in a fantasy. Yeah. Where do you think, what impact do all of these events cumulatively have on the election in November? Oh, I think they all hurt Hillary desperately and they help Trump because Trump looks like he's tough enough, strong enough, and capable of being uh, a genuine leader. And, uh, you know, Hillary, in, in all of her experience in Secretary of State, uh, exemplified weakness and, and living out of fantasy policy. Uh, she was she was a disaster. What what uh, Trump said last night was absolutely true. Uh, whether it's the Russian reset, which was a fiasco, or it was the Libyan decisions, which were a disaster, or it was the support for radicals in Egypt, which almost became a catastrophe. I mean, every time she turned around, she was doing something that weakened America. Uh, and of course, she started the negotiations with Iran, which are probably the worst single negotiations in yeah. American and we, history. And we, and we learned this week, $150 billion. 150 billion. And we learned this week, it takes half the time that it would have taken for them to get a, we a nuclear weapon. But uh, I've got to run. I know uh, you have to run as well, uh, Mr. Right. Speaker, as always. Thanks for being with us all week. We Thank really you. appreciate it. And you're not coming to Philly with us, which I, by the way, fully... Uh, no, but I, I'll, I'll be on the radio show and a little bit of television <laughs> I fu commenting <laughs> on the Democrats, but I ain't, I ain't I, going to Philly. Uh, I Talk actually, to you later. Yeah, I'll go on behalf of all of us. Thanks for the mission. I appreciate it. All right.